to Tennessee's At Home Learning Series for Literacy. Today's lesson is for all our sixth graders out there. The children, all children, are welcome to tune in. This is the first lesson in our series, so welcome. My name is Megan Gilley and I am a sixth grade teacher in Tennessee schools. I am so excited to be your teacher for this lesson today. Welcome to my virtual classroom. Today we will be learning about the Middle Ages, specifically how the Roman Empire changed in Europe during the Middle Ages. As we learn about the Middle Ages, we're going to be really thinking about how can we develop ourselves as readers, writers, and speakers. As readers, when we look at all our information, we're going to cite evidence to support a lot of questions that we're going to have about the text. In addition, we're going to analyze how was the Middle Age developed and discussed throughout the text. We're also going to take a look at some important key vocabulary words to help us understand this time period better. Then we're going to take all of this information that we learned today and as writers, we're going to write a summary that provides the key important information from the text. And lastly, why are we doing this? Well, because as speakers, it's our role to prepare for discussions on sixth grade level topics. So let's begin. Your materials that you're going to want for today are two pieces of paper, a pen or pencil, and a firm surface. And if you don't have those, that's okay. Just follow along. Like I said, we are beginning a unit called the Middle Ages. The Middle Ages was a time in history that occurred in Europe. Let's take a look at this map of Europe. Europe includes the following countries. You can see England in the upper left hand corner. Below England, you have France as designated on the map. Below France, you have Spain. In the upper right-hand cor corner, you have Germany. And below Germany, in the bottom right-hand side, we have Italy. If you look at Italy a little bit closer, you can help to remember this because it looks a little bit like a boot. So I'm going to get rid of the names on here, and I want to have you try one more time again what countries make up Europe during the Middle Ages? Hmm, let's see if you can remember. All right, let's try it again. What are those countries? And I'm a visual learner, so I like to kind of close my eyes or keep them open and think about hmm, what words did I see where again? Okay, so in the upper left hand corner is England. Very good. Below England is France. And below France in the bottom left-hand corner, we have Spain. In the upper right-hand corner of Europe, we have Germany. And the one that looks like a boot in the bottom right-hand corner, do you remember what it is? You're right, it is Italy. Great job. Again, our events about the Middle Ages take place in Europe. And again, these countries make up the Roman Empire during the Middle Ages. The Middle Ages occurred between ancient times and modern times. And I know that we all know what ancient means. It is history that occurred a long time ago. To be specific, the Middle Ages began in 476 AD and lasted 1,000 years until 1453. You might have also heard the Middle Ages called medieval. We're going to be using this term in our next set of lessons, so it's important to remember what that word means. But more specifically, it's important to understand that this time period, the Middle Ages, transformed Europe. So I want you to remember what those five countries are because we are going to come back to them throughout this lesson. So as readers, it's important that we understand that we want to collect evidence as we read. So throughout this next set of slides, we're going to be reading a ton of information. And information can be overwhelming, but we're going to learn as readers to have a highlighter with us and be able to highlight information to support our thinking. What we're looking at are the important takeaways and details from the text. 
So let's get started. We're going to think about what was the first major event that helped transform Western Europe leading to the Middle Ages. Follow along with me. We begin our journey into medieval Europe, another name for the Middle Ages, there it is again, by examining some key events that happened long before this age began. The first major event that helped to transform Western Europe occurred when the mighty Roman Empire, having grown too big for one emperor to rule, broke apart into Eastern and Western parts of the empire. This division had a major impact on the Western Europe. With the Roman Empire split into two parts, different tribes took the opportunity to try to seize or take some of its lands. Interestingly, some of these people were given the name barbarian from the Latin word barbarous, meaning foreigner or not Roman. The Romans may have considered these people to be uncivilized because they did not speak Latin, the language of the Roman Empire. So a lot of information there, but I want us to take away what you see on the screen. And you'll see that I already have highlighted this evidence because I want you to get used to seeing what highlighting the text looks like. What was the first major event that helped to transform Western Europe leading to the Middle Ages? Well, you can see it specifically says in the text what's in yellow. The first major event that helped transform Western Europe occurred when the mighty Roman Empire, having grown too big for one emperor to rule, broke apart into eastern and western parts of the empire. So again, what really happened here was that it was too big, so it had to break into two parts. Okay, You're also going to see on your screen the red word barbarian. We're going to take a look at barbarians just a little bit further. So let's continue. Barbarians are certain groups of people, and I want you to listen for what are the different groups of barbarians that we read about today. Some of the most successful barbarian invaders were the Germanic tribes, such as the Franks, the Visigoths, and the Vandals. These tribes lived on the edges of the empire. As the Romans became unable to defend their borders, these tribes pushed farther to the west. The Vandals looted towns and villages so badly that today we use the word vandalism to describe the destruction of property. The most infamous so-called barbarians were the Huns from Central Asia. Attila the Hun led this nomadic tribe as they invaded parts of Europe in the 400s. As the Huns conquered, they drove the once dominant Germanic tribes even further into the Western Roman Empire. Hmm. There were a lot of groups of people that were mentioned here, but I want you to ask yourself, well, what were the groups that made up the barbarians? And as really strong readers, I want us to think about, can I highlight where in the text it tells me that? Where are those groups of people mentioned? Are you right? Did you think about the Franks, Visigoths, and Vandals? If so, you are correct. Great job, readers. I want you to also be thinking about the next question. What are some events that helped transform Europe in the years leading up to the Middle Ages? So follow with me. Some of the most successful barbarian invaders were Germanic tribes, again, such as the Franks, the Visigoths, and Vandals. These tribes lived on the edges of the empire. As the Romans became unable to defend their borders, these tribes pushed farther to the west. And this text should sound familiar. We're closely reading it again so we can listen for a different reason. The vandals looted towns and villages so badly that today we use the word vandalism to describe the destruction of property. The most infamous so-called barbarians were the Huns from Central Asia. Again, Attila the Hun led this nomadic tribe as they invaded parts of Europe in the 400s. And as the Huns conquered, they drove the once dominant Germanic tribes even farther into Western Roman Empire. So I want us to think about, hmm, what are some events that helped transform Europe 
in the years leading up to the Middle Ages? If your eyes were a highlighter, could you highlight this answer in our paragraph? Think about it. Hmm. What events help transform? Events that help transform. Hmm. You're right. One of the very first things is that Germanic tribes such as the Franks, Visigoths, and Vandals invaded parts of the Roman Empire. And then in the second highlighted text, you'll see that the Huns, led by Attila, pushed that once dominant Germanic tribes even farther into the Western Roman Empire. So again, these two events helped transform Europe into the years leading up to the Middle Ages. Let's continue reading. As warlike tribes swept across Western Europe and powerful kings emerged, another transforming force appeared, the Christian church. Throughout these years of change, many people turned to the church because it offered them a sense of stability and hope. The heart or the center of the church was in Rome, the seat of the papacy. Hmm. It's an interesting word, papacy, and it's in red on your screen. Hmm. I can see that that word is actually talking about church because in the sentence it's used in, it says the heart or center of the church was in Rome, the seat of the papacy. So I'm wondering a little bit further, what could this word specifically mean? Hmm. The heart or center of the church was in Rome, the seat of the papacy. Are you right? If so, great guess. Papacy is the office or position of the Pope. Let's continue finding out what happened during this time period. Slowly, more and more groups of people became Christians, including the Germanic tribes. Over time, the church became even richer and more powerful than many kings and queens. It is this time when the Roman Empire was no longer the only powerful force in Europe that many historians consider to be the start of the Middle Ages. Roman, Germanic, and Christian ideas, as well as powerful kings, began to shape Western Europe. In one of their Germanic regions, a great ruler emerged. His name was Charles, and he took control of much of the land that later became France. Charles ruled <clears throat> for more than 45 years. He increased the size of his empire by gaining land in areas that are now a part of Germany, Austria, Italy, and Spain. As king, Charles defended the authority of the church. He promoted the spread of Christianity. On Christmas Day in 800 CE, he was crowned Roman emperor by the Pope in Rome, the papacy. He his reputation, excuse me, was so great that later writers called him Charlemagne, which means Charles the Great. And maybe you've heard of him, Charlemagne or Charles the Great. I want you to think about, so what, when we read this text, was no longer a powerful force? What was no longer a powerful force? Because I think that I'm hearing about how much the Roman Empire was changing here. So there had to be something that stopped being so powerful. And that's right. The Roman Empire was no longer a powerful force in Europe. So we have to think about, okay, well then what was? What took place of the Roman Empire? Well, when we think about being strong readers, we want to be able to cite evidence from the text. So where in the text does it tell us what took place of the Roman Empire? Hmm. Think about it. You are correct. If you said powerful kings, powerful kings began to shape Western Europe. Do you know who was the most powerful? has a very specific name and one that you might remember. It is Charles the Great. In one Germanic region, a great ruler emerged, it says in the first highlighted sentences. His name was Charles, and he took control of much of the land that later became France. At the bottom, we also have text support 
to support who is the most powerful. And it says he was crowned Roman emperor. His reputation was so great that later writers called him Charlemagne or Charles the Great. All of this text evidence helps support who was the most powerful during this time period. Let's continue on, readers. Charles, as he started to take power, created a particular kind of government. So think about what is it that he created? Charles encouraged new ideas and promoted an interest in education and art. To help him rule his empire, Charlemagne also encouraged a system of government that we now call feudalism. Hmm, what was that word? Feudalism. What is that? He gave land instead of money to those who worked for him in the military or government. The practice of paying men with land spread throughout other countries in Western Europe. Life in the Middle Ages was not the same as it is now. So when we think about what type of government Charles created, in the text you can see there in red and circled, it's called feudalism. Again, feudalism is not paying in money, but rather paying men with land. And again, this spread throughout many other countries. As we learn just a little bit more about this time period, I want you to think about what are some big takeaways that we can learn from this next section or two. So follow along with me. For one thing, people who lived back then probably thought about time differently. Many people measured time by the rising and setting of the sun and the passing of the seasons. Do you do that still? Probably not. But for this reason, life likely had a slower and steadier pace. In addition, there was a strong desire to honor God that appeared to transcend time. As a result, people undertook impressive long-term projects, such as building magnificent cathedrals that took centuries to complete. Language and location helped shape people's lives too. Because travel was so difficult, many people didn't do it. Generally, only rich, educated people in Europe traveled. Almost everyone else stayed close to home. Although Latin was the language of both the church and the government, only select members of society could understand that language. So I want us to think, let me go back to that section, excuse me, maybe not. I want us to think about those takeaways. It seems that those who are wealthy had different lives than those who were not, and that many people in Europe didn't have the opportunity to travel and learn. So let's learn a little bit more about those who lived during this time period. Follow with me. Most people lived in isolated existence, meaning by themselves and secluded. They did not travel far from home. As a result, most people communicated using the language or dialect spoken in the place of their birth. As strange as it may seem to us, in certain parts of Europe, villagers from places just 30 miles apart could not easily understand each other. For this reason, most people during the Middle Ages were concerned with the affairs of their village, what they owned, and the local ward in the way of the payment and how to ensure their place in heaven. I'm thinking about, well, how did this time impact people and how they lived? And here we begin to see just a little bit more of feudalism. People were wealthy, there were poor, and we want to think about, well, how does that impact how they live? So I learned a lot so far about the Middle Ages today. We did quite a bit of reading. As strong readers, it's important that we think about of all this information we read, are there certain details that might stand out as more important? You're right. So what we're going to do is take out a sheet of paper. We're going to jot down key important details. And we're gonna do create two T-charts. A T-chart is where you fold your paper in half. So do that if you have your paper ready with me. You fold your paper in half. And on the left-hand side, you're going to put question to label that column. And on the right side, you're going to put answers. And you may have to write just a little bit quickly. That's okay. 
but if not, you can always go back to the Tennessee Department of Education's website to review this lesson and pause for a little bit more time. But our very first question is, what is another word for the Middle Ages? Can you check your understanding today and see, can you remember that detail? And write that question down if you're with me. What is another word for the Middle Ages? Hmm. On the right hand side, you're right. It is that first word that we learned today. It is medieval. Medieval also refers to the Middle Ages. Our second question that really focuses um, on important details is where did we focus our study today? And when I think of the word where, I'm thinking location. And I know at the beginning of our lesson, we saw a map. Hmm, what was the location? Where did we focus our study today? Can you jot it down? Or think about it? You're right if you said Europe. And Europe, if you remember, was made up of how many countries? Five. And so what were those five countries? Again, I'm a visual learner, so I'm thinking back to the image that I saw. And I know in the upper left-hand corner, we had England. Below that, we had France. Below France, we had Spain. And then in the upper right-hand corner, we had Germany. And the one that looks like a boot was Italy. So if you had those five correct in your mind, jot them down on your paper. Those were the five countries in Europe during the Middle Ages. That's an important takeaway. In addition, I want us to consider, we talked about these different tribes. There were different people that we had learned about, one of them being the Visigoths. These tribes were also called something else because they looted, also known as vandalizing. And so they received this particular name. It starts with a B. Can you get it? It is barbarian. So jot that down on your T-chart too, if you're with me. Otherwise, you can just think about it. Another important detail is over time, who ruled in Europe during the Middle Ages? Hmm, who was the particular gentleman he was brought in by the Pope. Charles the Great, you're right, also known as Charlemagne or Charlemagne the Great. And our last important takeaway is what kind of government did Charles the Great create? Do you remember? Kind of created these rich and poor different um, groups of people is feudalism. Remember, feudalism is referring to how much land a person owned. And again, that separated rich into poor. So I want you to take these notes. And if you want to use the same piece of paper, that's okay. I want you to flip to the back side or get a new sheet. And we're going to make another T-chart. And this time, we're looking for details about the rich and the poor. We learned toward the end of our reading today about what privileges the rich had maybe versus the poor during this time period. So we're going to be thinking about what did the rich have access to or opportunity to that maybe the poor did not. And if I'm sitting here thinking about this, I might think, well, I know that the rich was given land. Can you think of any others? Hmm. Travel, you're right. Those who were wealthy were able to travel outside of their homes, just a little bit further, and languages. They were able to learn other languages. So when I think about the rich and what they had opportunities and access to versus the poor, what might we put on the poor side? Consider what we put on the rich side. Hmm. You're right, they didn't have land. They didn't have the ability to travel, nor did they have the ability to learn languages. So really good readers take evidence from the text and support it by highlighting it as we read. Then we can take that information further and ask ourselves, well, what was the most important information from today? And we can jot it into charts like a T-chart, like the two we just made. And the last 
thing that we're going to do is to write a summary. And we're going to write a summary over those most important details. So step one says you're going to use the details from what we learned and use them in your writing. And there's not a whole lot of time to do this, but you can work on this independently as well. Independently means on your own. So you're going to take your information from your charts that we made and use those key details to structure in a paragraph. When we write a summary, it's important you're only using the facts. You don't want to insert your opinion. Just keep it factual. And what are the biggest key details in logical order? If you are stuck, you can think about what questions were being asked on the left of this chart, as well as what information we gained from the rich and poor t-chart. If you're stuck, you can use my guide to help you. I used everything on the left. I said the Middle Ages were known as the Medieval Ages in Europe when the Roman Empire transformed. During this time, and I'm on to the second question, Europe was made up of five countries, England, France, Spain, Germany, and Italy. Moving on to the next question that I address, many of the people were part of tribes called barbarians. And over time, powerful kings ruled, including leaders like Charlemagne the Great or Charles the Great, who created a system of feudalism that was based on how much land a person owned. And I know that on my second chart, I inserted more information that this created rich and poor groups. What did the wealthy have? Well, they had access to land, language, and the ability to travel, while the poor did not. So when you think of our whole lesson today, of all the things that we've read, this is the most important information, which is why it's a summary. It's a much shorter version of the most critical details. Okay, readers and writers, we are finishing up today, and boys and girls, I enjoyed our lesson about how the Roman Empire changed into Europe through the Middle Ages. Thank you for inviting me into your home. I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson at Tennessee's Home Learning Series. If you want to watch this lesson again, you can go to the Tennessee Department of Education's website at www.tn.gov forward slash education. And learners, I look forward to seeing you again. Bye.